Hi, I'm Peter Dupree uh, from discoverformosa.com. Uh, for those art lovers out there, this segment is for you. Uh, we were very lucky to visit the Yangsang Lung Art Museum in downtown Taipei, which is uh, in a district called Yonghe. Hopefully my pronunciation is correct. Um, the artist's work was displayed over five floors. Uh, we were very lucky to be taken around and shown around by uh, Christopher Young, who is in fact uh, both the curator as well as the grandson of Yang Sung Lung. Uh, he was able to give us uh, many anecdotes, uh, many memories from uh, his experience with the artist and uh, many insights into the art itself. So join us now. Okay, well, welcome to the Yan Sanlan Art Museum. I am Christopher Young. I am Yan Sanlan's grandson. I am the I'm the last of the generation, so to, so to speak. So 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 I have had to I've had to sort of learn everything relatively recently, and uh, it, so it's it's. It's, it's been a challenge, but it's also a privilege to be kind of a, a part of something that's a piece of Taiwan's history in that way. Uh, specifically, this property. The property, this is, this, is what's, this is one of the larger private gardens in Taipei County, but it actually is a small part of what used to be much, encompass much of Yonghe. Uh, my, my grandfather's father was the first mayor of Yonghe. And uh, the, their, their family was one of the first uh, shipping families to, to import and export goods between Taiwan and the West. Uh, this, this statue was, was rendered uh, about a year after my grandfather passed away. Uh, or actually, that same year, uh, there, were, there, were, there were two artists who did work with it. Um, this uh, this this one is very accurately rendered. The other one is a, is a little more characterized. Uh, the the original is in Renai Park in Yonghe. These are plaques of commemoration from uh, previous and current presidents of Taiwan. This is Ma Ying-jeou uh, when he was actually wishing my wishing my grandmother a happy 100th birthday, and. Uh, and then this was this was my this was from Li Donghui, who is uh, who happens to be my grandmother, who's still alive. Uh, my grandmother, or his wife, is my grandmother's cousin, or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, my gra my grandfather subsequently uh, he 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 built a career on on impressionist oil paintings uh, some of the, what he would often do is he'd go to a location he would he would make maybe a very small painting then he would travel with that that would be like his negative but he had to see it he had to see every location that he that he painted he couldn't do it off of a photograph he didn't want to make it up uh, he, you know, like happy trees. No, he had, he had to actually see what was there. Now he may change it to suit his mood or to suit what he wanted to say about the place. He may take what he sees here as a summer landscape and make it winter. Well, this, this particular painting was painted in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. This is the Cuyahoga River. And then uh, this, uh, this, is a, this is a place kind of near and dear to my childhood. It's a, it's a, it's a metro park called the Gorge. And it's a river that cuts through kind of like a, like a more deciduous canyon. And my grandfather, actually Autumn, a little known fact, Autumn only uh, comes to 10% of the world, uh, like a change in autumn colors. And he would, he would see it and he would have to see it, and then he would come back with his smaller painting, and he would and he would render out something very large like this, maybe maybe many copies of them. This is one of the things that makes my grandfather's work. He's very prolific, but at the same time, he, it's it's a little bit easy. It's not easy to copy his exact style. It's actually relatively easy to spot a fake. The problem is people are able to pass off fakes a lot because there could be dozens of authentic copies of one specific subject matter. So all they have to do is say, if someone can't say, well, you know, I know that one, it's in the museum. Well, no, there's probably 40 or 50 of them, real ones out there that, that, make, that make the market a little bit difficult to control that way.
but this, uh, but yeah, he, he loved he loved the balance of colors. He he loved what were one of the this actually not not all of his painting did this, but I like the painting as his as his painting evolved, and you can see where he wanted to make the background and the foreground difficult to differentiate so that it's it's difficult to see where 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 the front ends and where and where a background begins this way this is he would even throws a little bit of the red from the tree into the sky brings a little bit of the blue through this way he he want, at one point in his painting he wanted to create this kind of an interchange between between what's in front and what's behind uh, it it'll be it'll be more this and the growth from other from others uh from other periods will be more apparent as we see more paintings. I didn't come to Taiwan for the first time in my life until I was 17 years old in 1989. However, he came to the United States and we traveled so much in the United States and Canada that, that I, was able to, I was able to spend much of my childhood sharing his process this way and so the so particularly the paintings that come out of Ohio and come out of that and come out of North America I'm I'm particularly connected to because often I was there when he did them and, uh, and this this is one of them this was done in Fairlawn Ohio this is actually a summertime landscape he turned it into winter for his own for his own needs, and because he couldn't, because he couldn't see what was really much further back, that's why he allowed the trees in the background to retain some autumnal foliage, because he because he wasn't actually able to accurately depict what was back there, the way he would if the trees really were bare of leaves, like the ones in the foreground are. This this is this is an, this is another uh, place of my childhood. This is this is Portage Lake State Park, and uh, I have I have a photograph of him making this painting, and, uh, and again, a, a, uh, popular themes of his, and so he so he adapted it to to he adapted it to to make it popular with his core audience, which are his which are his Taiwanese fans, is to is is water foliage and mountains and there actually are no mountains here but he he add, he added he added something in that vein to to appeal to the audience but i know i know exactly where this is however he he certainly got outside of north america uh this is this is mount everest he he went he he traveled all over the world he, uh, the, the Himalayas, the Arctic Circle, uh, all over Europe. This is a Taiwan staple, this, uh, this, this particular work. Uh, in 2005, 2005, I believe, uh, the, the Kuomintang, they first went, they, they made one of their first, it was one of the first high-level political envoys from Taiwan to China in decades. And one of the things they did was brought, they brought lots of cultural items from Taiwan to China as goodwill gifts. And two of the items that they brought were my grandfather's paintings. And this was this, this scene, one of, one of the original images of this, though I believe Maybe a little bit smaller was one was one of their was one of their key pieces. In fact, when they when some of the newspapers discussed the envoy to China, they featured a photograph on their front page of this painting, somewhat in the context of "Look at what we're giving up." <laughs> but at the same t but at the same time, I took I took it as they 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 saw they saw it as integral to their being able to buy goodwill. This is one of the earliest paintings that we have of his. This is, uh, it's, 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 clearly, it's clearly reminiscent of, of, uh, of, the, of like that Eastern style, the disappearing horizon, 
uh, the, the fact that the horizon line is nowhere in is not in the composition. It, uh, these these sort of uh, natural still life subject matters. However, even ev even with the, even at this time, you can see the impressionistic inclinations. It's 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 widely thought that that he that he discovered impressionism for himself that way where he where he where he felt compelled to make images like this and then when he and then when he learned of french impressionism he he he, he like breathed a sigh of relief ah someone else thinks the way that i think this way and uh and because because this this painting predates his Parisian training. I notice it doesn't have as much um, paint, or at least oil paint. No, no, it's no, it's not as thickly applied. It's uh, it it does it does it does keep that typical you know that that typical Asian composition, you know, particularly particularly in early twentieth century and older. Work and uh, and uh, and and also uh, as as much of Taiwan has and had at that point uh, a strong Japanese undercurrent to it. All. The the European evolution of his work as he as he brings the horizon in as he as he as he as he deepens his perspective as he brings in the colors as he lets the colors kind of dance around a bit. This is perhaps one of his most famous paintings. It's on several posters including the one outside the museum. This is of my grandmother when they were dating. And uh, this was a this was a this was a uh, uh, I don't know what, you, what, what, what you'd say, maybe like a, like a gift to impress. <laughs> the, this way, they were uh, you know, young, young lovers in, in a Parisian art school. You know, you could just, um, you know, the, the cliches kind of write themselves that way. <laughs> and, uh, he often liked to work with models. He would, uh, m uh, un unfortunately for the museum, most of his uh, most of his nudes are are in the hands of private collectors. Go figure. <laughs> but the but he but he did enjoy working with models, especially dancers, because he felt like that it was uh, it was a kind of art that they that that they were. It was one of the few times where he engaged himself in another artistic process that way, that he, that he would bring that medium in and study another artistic medium instead of, in, instead of simply studying the art of nature, that, for lack of better terms. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's very, it's very, it's very, li it's very likely it's very likely that that he has that he has imposed her on an, on another image that he that he has incorporated from another work that he did. It's doubtful that they were out in the wilderness doing that. <laughs> this is the most asked for painting on the Taiwan market. Uh, the 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 northern Taiwan coastline. The, the, uh, the, the seashore, the rocks, the waves, the sun, it, as from, from a, a Taiwanese connoisseur of his paintings, this painting has it all.